Bathroom vanities can be one of the most expensive parts of a bathroom remodel. You can pay $400, dollars or $800 and still get MDF or particle board. I'm going to show you how I built one for under $300 made out of solid wood and you can do it too. We're going to start off with the plywood carcass and I'm going to be using several different sheets of plywood or pieces of plywood. It'll be a great use for the leftovers that I've got. I started cutting down the mismatched pieces into the cabinet parts. I'm using a mix of different types and species of plywood here, but we'll hide all that mess with a couple coats of paint later. Now this is a frameless cabinet with inset drawers, so the edge of the plywood cabinet box will be exposed on the front. And if you've ever tried painting the edge of a poplar core plywood, you know that's just a hot mess waiting to happen. So to let those edges take the paint a little bit better and give it some durability, I'm gonna use some three quarter inch maple. I'm gonna cut it down to eighth inch strips and then glue it on there. It's kind of like armor for your plywood, except the armor's also wood, just harder. Now, instead of making the cut the traditional way between the blade and the fence, which can get a little dicey at an eighth of an inch, I'm making the cut on the left side of the blade. I mark the board at an eighth of an inch and then I set the fence by lining up that mark on the outside of the blade. And then I grab this magnetic base from my dial caliper set. It's got a knob on it that rotates the magnets internally and basically turns it on and off. I set the board on the fence and then I lock the magnetic block down to the table against the board. Now just make sure if you do this to have the block well in front of the blade. Now using this setup, I ran the maple through and I got my first eighth inch strip. Then I could unlock the fence and move in that now skinnier board until it hits the magnetic block. And this gives me repeatable small cuts without having to worry about the small parts getting trapped between the blade and the fin. It was actually my first time doing cuts this way and it worked out pretty well. All right, we got all the strips cut and now we're ready to put them on the plywood. I'm just gonna be using some quick setting glue as well as some painter's tape. This stuff sets up pretty fast so I can glue it on, get done, and by the time I come back to it, it'll be ready to go. I like using the painter's tape versus brad or pin nail method for nailing on edge banding because you don't have any holes to fill later. Now you can see I left the edge banding a bit wider than the plywood edge so it overhangs on each side. And I'm going to come back and flush that up afterwards. It's much easier to rip off the strips of tape first and then put them on the edge of your bench. Then you can just grab the tape and focus on not knocking over your panels while you're putting it on. Which reminds me, I really need to get a bench vise. Now, after the glue was dry, I took off all the tape so that I could flush up the trim with the sides. Now, there are several ways to do this, and using a block plane definitely isn't the fastest, but it's arguably the most relaxing and satisfying. There's just something about making those nice little curlicue wood shavings that puts a smile on your face. And since you can't see my face, just imagine me smiling right now. I was taking very thin shavings, and as soon as I was close to or on the veneer, I stopped. I trimmed off the excess length with a flush trim saw, and then I finished off by sanding the whole edge with 120 grit to make sure it was all smooth and flush. And now that the edging was finished, I went back to the table saw and I cut the parts to final size. Now it's easier to do it this way for me in case the edging isn't exactly perfect and throws off the fit between the parts. And with the size of the bottom panel and the cabinet locked in, I could cut the top stretcher to size to match it. I set the stop block on my miter saw stand for this cut, and then I went back to the table saw and ripped down several more strips for the other supports for the top and the back of the cabinet. Now the vanity is gonna have an open top and back to account for the sink and plumbing drain and supply lines. Now these supports I'm cutting will give the cabinet strength, and they're also gonna support that vanity top and give it plenty of room for the bowl and all the plumbing. I'm using pocket hole joinery for the cabinet, and I made quick work of all the holes in the bottom panel and the supports with my Craig Foreman before assembly. This is a 31 inch vanity, so I used a piece of MDF on the top of my skinny bench to hold the whole thing. But this cabinet goes together quickly with pocket screws attaching the bottom panel as well as the front and back support on the top. I've got the cabinet put together and this is how I'd normally do cabinets, but since there's gonna be extra weight on top of this, it's gonna be a marble top that's really heavy. Uh, I'm gonna add another support block that's gonna be right underneath and the top drawer in this vanity is actually gonna be a false drawer. So it's gonna allow me to recess that and then attach the false drawer as well. So I'm gonna use a little block that's a spacer and that'll give me a place to attach the drawer. Plus I'll just give it extra support in case any of my kids wanna jump up there and start, you know, flossing or something. I don't know. 
Now to make the top even more rigid, I screwed it down to that recess support. Now this really firms up the top support and takes any flex out of it. I added some mounting cleats to the back of the cabinet, which I'll use to connect it to the wall during install. Now they get secured to this top support and bottom panel as well to add that extra strength. This gives a really strong cabinet even though you don't have a back or a top attached to it. And with the carcass wrapped up, I could move on to the drawer front. All right, I'm keeping the use what you've got theme going on here. And I have three drawer fronts that I had made for a different three drawer cabinet for the shop. So I'm gonna use those. So all I'm gonna have to do is rip them down to size and make them a little narrower as well because they were overlay and this is gonna be inset. Now the cabinet and doors are ready for paint, but before I get into painting, I wanna make the base. I'm gonna be doing that out of two by two stock, and this is just pine, and it's a select pine. I like using this select pine because it's way straighter than what the normal other pine is. That stuff looks like uh, a hockey stick at best sometimes. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the base, and then I can paint all the pieces together and make that an easy process. I've got four little pieces of the two by two, which are gonna be the legs, and I wanna do a little bit of a taper. So instead of just a square block, I'm gonna go ahead and just do a subtle taper on there to give it a nice modern feel. Now, I'm gonna be using my tapering jig here. I have a whole video on how I made this, and it's gonna give me repeatable cuts for the tapers to make it nice and easy. Now, if you wanna see other cool tips and tricks and projects, go ahead and get subscribed. I have a ton in the archive and a lot more to come. Let's get going. The tapering jig is really easy to use and get repeatable cuts, which is why I love it. I mark the beginning and the end of a taper on one of the legs. And then I use those marks to set the sliding stop on the jig. Now everything gets locked in place with the toggle clamps and that's all the setup that you need. That makes a nice clean cut and after the first one is done, you can just unclamp the part and rotate it 90 degrees for the next leg. And it doesn't really matter which way you turn it as long as you have two adjacent tapered sides. I repeated this for the other three legs, and with the blade raised this high and the off cuts unsupported, just make sure you don't stand behind the blade. Sometimes they shoot back pretty quick, and nobody wants to be the star of a viral crotch shot fail video. Now to add some shadow lines and more interest to the base, I put a round over on all the 2x2 parts that I'd cut. I use my router table, which makes short work of it, but you can easily do this with a palm router as well. Now the round over adds just enough of a break to give a shadow that will separate the base and the cabinet, as well as the stretchers and the legs. I drilled pocket holes in the underside of all the 2x2 frame parts to attach them to the legs, but dowels or floating tenons will work here as well. I started assembling the base with the short sides into the legs, and I quickly realized I forgot to put the round over on the ends of those 2x2 parts, and it just wasn't looking right. So I jumped back over, made those quick round overs, which, amazingly enough, was the only oversight and setback of the project. Knock on wood. I secured the short sides of the base into the legs like before, and then I put the short sides on edge and clamped the long front support between them. This is slightly tricky to clamp, but the legs being so short, let me clamp them with parallel clamps from the other side, and it worked out nicely. I added on the back side to complete the frame and put a divider in the center for some extra support. I finished off the base by rounding over the tops of the legs with a sanding pad and sanding down all my parts that needed paint. And while I'm priming and painting the cabinet parts, let's talk about Skillshare, the sponsor of today's video. The Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of different courses for curious and creative people, which I'd imagine you're one of those since you're watching a how-to video. It's a place where you can go and learn from the comfort of your own home and explore topics like design, productivity, photography, and one of my favorites, video editing. I just went through advanced video editing with Adobe Premiere Pro 2020 by Jordi Vandeput. Now, I've been editing for years, but I'm always looking for new productivity hacks or features that can help me edit faster. It's the little nuggets like how to resize a video track quickly that's gonna save me minutes or even hours over the course of a year. Skillshare has a growing community of millions and teachers are publishing new classes all the time. Members get access to all these classes for less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. And for the first 1,000 people to use the link down below in my description, you can get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership. So you can try it out and see what you can learn. Thanks Skillshare. Now while that paint is drying, I'm gonna go ahead and make the drawers. Now I really started getting scrappy for these drawer parts. Now there are off cuts littering my shop and I picked through them to find all the stock that I needed for these parts. And with the design that I'm using, each drawer is going to have eight pieces to it and the center drawer will be slightly shallower than the bottom drawer. 
So I ripped all the boards to width first, and I made sure to label everything with post-it notes to keep things straight. So I pulled out old Fred the Sled, and I cut all the parts to length using a stop block for repeatability. And after making each cut, I set them aside on my bench so that I wouldn't mix anything up and cut something too short. I drilled some pocket holes in the front and the two back compartment pieces, and I was ready for assembly. Okay, this part could be a little tricky, but uh, I think I've got it figured out. I'm gonna turn this around. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have these two dividers here and then span between them to create the cutout for where the, all the drainage needs to go or the supply lines. And there's gonna be pieces down here. So I don't wanna use pocket holes on the inside because then you'd be able to see them from the inside and I always like to hide the pocket holes. So what I'm gonna do is take these and use, them as a, use it as a spacer and then attach some screws from uh, what'll be the front and then I can put this piece in the back and it will be nice and square and make sure that my sides are not bowing in. So I think that'll work. This process worked really well and I was able to quickly make the outer compartments for the drawers. Then I could take the measurement for that final piece to connect in the middle. And make sure to measure at the front of the drawer, not where it's going to be attached because there may be some flexing or movement back that far. I did a test cut to see how the fit was and then after some minor adjustments, I cut the middle piece and secured it in place with pocket screws. I repeated this process for the other drawer, but this is the upper drawer and it's going to have to go around the drain pipe as well as the supply lines. So I set the center piece further forwards on this one. If you want plans for this vanity with detailed parts diagrams, cut list, and step-by-step -step instructions, you can find those linked down below in the description. And I appreciate your support. Now next I cut some quarter inch plywood to size for the bottoms of the drawers. Now these needed to be notched as well, so I set the drawers on top of the plywood and traced the outline of the notches, and then I made those cuts with a jigsaw. I secured the bottom panels with glue and brad nails, and I made sure to nail into all the dividers for a really solid drawer bottom. Now drawers are something I used to really struggle with, but like anything else, they get easier with practice, and the more you make, the easier it is to get square drawers. So if they're frustrating you, just hang in there, it's gonna get better. Now after sanding the drawers, I finished them with Total Bolt Halcyon Clear. It's a marine grade varnish, so it's perfect for a humid and potentially wet area like a bathroom. Now I could mount the drawers in the cabinet. I cut a plywood spacer to evenly place the slides off the bottom. And I used my combination square to set the slides back the same distance as the recess support at the top. This way all the fronts should be even and flush across the whole way. I pre-drilled holes and I attached the slides with the included screws. And then I used a taller spacer to place and secure the second set of drawer slides. Now since these drawers have a lot of extra space around them, I'm not using my normal stacking spacer method. Instead, I just grabbed a 2x2 offcut and used it to hold the slides up off my bench and then secured them in place. I did this for both drawers and then I gave them a test run in the cabinet and they worked awesome. You gotta love those soft close slides. Now before attaching the base, I cut out a hole for the water supply pipes. Now the wall that this is going on is an exterior wall, so the pipes come up through the floor. Now if you're lucky, yours will be wall mounted and you can skip this step. To prepare the base for install, I drilled some countersunk holes halfway through the base. And this will let me use one and a quarter inch screws to attach it. And next I flipped the cabinet upside down on the floor so that I could put the base on there. I made sure that the front and sides were flush and then I screwed it in place. I probably should have clamped the base down, but this paint is still very fresh and I didn't want it to pull off with the clamping pressure and then have a big mess on my hands. To get ready to mount the drawer fronts, I drilled holes in the front of the drawers as well as that top recess support piece. And then I pre-drilled the hardware mounting holes in the false fronts, which makes this next step much easier. I used an eighth inch spacer and some plastic cards to center the bottom drawer front in the opening and then I secured it to the drawer with screws through those hardware holes that I just drilled. And this held it in place so that I could then open up the drawer and permanently secure it from the inside. This technique worked really well in this case because I didn't want that clamp on that fresh paint like I just mentioned. I followed this process for the second drawer and then that top false front, I pre-installed the drawer hardware on it. And then I went around to the backside and attached it onto that top support. 
So I wanted to explain this false front real quick. So you saw me put it on there. I just attached it with screws from the top. I was thinking about having some L brackets or something to give it some extra support, but this is really secure. So I don't want to do it too much because I'm going to pull it off, but <laughs> that was the board that was <laughs> blocking the shadow. <laughs> All right, we're good, we're good. It's pretty solid here. So I did shim it a little bit back underneath the drawer, in between the drawer and that to get this front uh, out flush. So if you did need to flush up the front of this, you could always put in uh, some L brackets and bring it up and shim it however you needed to. All right, let's put the top on here and see how it looks. And for a quick breakdown of the cost, though these may vary for your area, the wood would be about $90, the top is $100, the hardware including the drawer pulls and the slides, $48, the finish, $30, and I included $8 for fasteners, which I already had on hand. So a total of $276. If you want to see the full remodel, you can check it out right there and you can see how the bathroom looks with the vanity in it. If you want to build your own vanity, I'm going to have a link down below in the description where you can get the plans. I want to give a big thank you to all the folks that have been joining the Builders Club and I'll catch you guys on the next video. We're going to build something awesome.